I'm Natalia Lobak, and this is Change Course. Crisis, the great catalyst. Since March of 2020, our world, as we know it, has gone through one of the most transformational changes that we as humans have ever seen in our lifetimes. Why is that? It seems that the pandemic was a catalyst for things that organizations had been working at and failing at for years. In the span of a few short months, organizations accelerated their digital transformations faster than a hundred change managers could have. That's just one example. If you think about how much change there has been in work life around flexible work, hybrid work, um, where we choose to do our work and how we choose to do it, introducing these strong components of self-determination, autonomy, and personal choice have been a direct result of the crisis of the pandemic and the prolonged crisis of the pandemic. So why is that? Well, if we look at this from a systems perspective, our work lives, the way that we operated, the organizations, it was a system in homeostasis. And what happened with the introduction of a deadly virus that turned all of our assumptions and normal habits and ways of operations on their heads, turned everything upside down. It introduced a heightened state of adaptation, a rapid state of adaptation into the system. So if a big, humongous, multi-million dollar project wasn't enough to get a digital transformation off the ground, what happened was the crisis of the pandemic kicked that system up into overdrive, right up and out of homeostasis. The resistance of the system was essentially erased. And so there was a golden window of opportunity to introduce a whole host of additional changes, some good, some bad. But what was very interesting about this time was that it wasn't us who were pushing the changes. The change, this big pandemic change happened to us. And as a result, a number of things that needed to change in order to reach a new level of homeostasis just happened without almost very much effort at all. So when we look at change in systems, this is probably the best example that I have ever seen. And it's interesting because in my own personal in my change work I was actually working at a client that was implementing a huge change and that organizational and system level change was set to happen and set to be completed in April of 2020 and so we were very close to the end and when all of the changes of the pandemic occurred Many uh, people were saying, we should stop. We should roll this back. This is too much for us to handle. And while I do agree, it is a lot to handle and it can push people into overwhelm and it, you know, it has a human cost to it. At the same time, if the system is already in a heightened state of adaptation and response, introducing more adaptations and responses in that system is actually easier than trying to kick it out of homeostasis later. And so what we actually saw was that while the actual implementation of the 
change took a little bit longer than we had initially thought. So we didn't finish in April. It took us another few months to get it done. But what happened was it actually stuck. The change stuck. And there have been so many other times when you see slippage, you see people slipping back into old patterns, old processes, old relationships, old structures, all of that after, you know, a big change has been introduced. But this time, it actually stuck. It was part of that new level of homeostasis, and it stuck. It actually was a change in the system that enabled it, which made it that much more compelling for the new state. So for example, being able to automate so many of the processes to be able to make those system supported, electronic supported, um, to take that work off of a desk of paper and put that in a place where people could access it from anywhere. It actually was part of the change that made the whole new structure and the whole new way of working stick. It actually made it easier. That was one of the biggest learnings I've had through this period of time. So here's the funny thing about humans. We love homeostasis. We are biological beings. We are complex adaptive systems. Homeostasis and thinking about systems explains so much of human behavior. And it really helps us to understand that the two key components that you need are persistence and time in order to make changes in a system stick. So, I mean, you look at something as simple as an example of the New Year's resolution. We make a New Year's resolution every year to go to the gym and get healthy and eat more vegetables. And within a couple weeks, we have abandoned those resolutions. And we beat up on ourselves and we're terrible and we say, oh, how bad we are. But truly, we should just accept that that is part of human nature. And that we love homeostasis. We love it. We love to be in steady state. And so the resistance that we feel to change is part of our nature. It's part of who we are as humans. So some of the individual theories of personal change that are so interesting, um, looking at human behavioral models, looking at you know, something as amazing as James Clear's Atomic Habits, which I've mentioned before. It talks about persistence and it talks about systems and creating systems to uphold the change. And that's the gold right there, isn't it? Isn't it? In personal change and in organizational change alike. You need to change the system to make the change stick. It's not a process. It's a destination. So this is the end of the few arc series. I think it's been about four episodes that we've done on complex adaptive systems. So as a recap, what have we learned? Well, first of all, Heraclitus, everything flows. Everything in the universe is in a constant state of change. Our organizations, our human systems, they are not static. They are dynamic. They are always changing. And so if you think about change as a process, you get lost in the weeds. It's a destination. It's where we want to go to. When we talk about complex adaptive systems, we talk about the relationships and the connections that happen on top of our linear org structures, our matrix org structures, those complexities of relationships and behaviors that happen despite what structures we try to put around it. The next piece, adaptation, systems adapt. That is why incremental change and looking at change in increments can be quite effective. But when you're seeking to make a big change to the system, 
you've really got to look at the components of the system itself because systems are meant to adapt and return to homeostasis. And so when we're seeking to change organizations and we're looking at a problem like resistance, resistance is a characteristic of the system. It is not an individual characteristic. Although we can have resistance as part of our human makeup because we as humans also want to return to homeostasis. It is part of our nature to resist change. And that is okay. What I hope that you can take away from these episodes and the four main concepts that I've talked about is that if you reframe change as the destination and you stop trying to figure out what is the perfect process to get there, it opens you up to more opportunities to test and work within the system that you have. It also opens us up to really think about defining and understanding that system, the components of that system, before we seek to change it. And thirdly, that we actually do need to think a lot about efficiency and ease because that is what homeostasis is all about. So when we set that destination, when we chart that course towards our destination of change, that destination, that result that we are looking for, that new and renewed system, that new and renewed organizational system, it needs to be easy. It needs to have flow. It needs to be at a steady state and after a big change there is likely to be a period of incremental adaptation as the system seeks and finds and rests into homeostasis lastly the most important point i think is to not go against the nature of system, the nature of humans, the nature of us as biological beings, and to really work with it in order to make change effective and lasting and sustainable and impactful. We will be able to do so much more and have so much more impact if we work with our nature and we work with our tendency to want and desire and crave homeostasis. We will get so much further if we work with that instead of against it. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, I invite you to like, share, rate, and subscribe because it helps others find us. You can find our show notes on our website at www.charthouse.ca where each episode has a page under the Change Course podcast. So anything that I referenced in today's episode will be posted there so you can find it. While you're visiting us, sign up for the Change Navigator newsletter. You'll get a monthly dispatch of all things change, what we're working on, and our latest research. Our music is Levity by Emily Klassen. Change Course is available wherever you listen to podcasts. We also have an accessible version on YouTube with fully edited captions. You can find the link to our YouTube channel in the show notes. Thank you again for listening. And remember, it's never too late to change course.